Hello, I'm Mimi, and today I'm here to answer your questions about being a beginner artist and running a small art business. So let's jump straight into the questions. The first one says, Hello, Mimi. For my question, how were you able to shift from traditional to digital art? Have you taken any courses before, or did you learn on your own how to use the different digital apps? I always made art in traditional mediums when I was younger, and when I wanted to start developing my art skills properly, I was using pencils in my sketchbook because it felt like the easiest medium for me to use. I do have a background as a graphic designer, so I was familiar with using Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator for designing, but apart from one or two illustrations that I had made in Photoshop using vector paths, I hadn't ever drawn anything digital. The way I transitioned was to take the photos of my pencil art that I would be posting to Instagram and adding a few brush strokes and details here and there in Photoshop where I wanted to have more control of the colors or contrast. Over time, I was adding more and more digital strokes and doing less and less pencil work. So eventually I started drawing from scratch in Photoshop. I didn't do any courses or anything like that. I just practiced most days of the week, even if it was just a little bit of time. And I started really simple until I understood what brushes I liked and what was happening with my layers and things like that. You definitely could take a course though, or even just watch some tutorials online, and that will probably help you feel a little more confident. Question number two is, do you always finish a drawing in one session or do you ever take a few days to finish one drawing? I mostly draw quite simple illustrations, so more often than not, I finish them in one sitting. They usually take one to three hours, but occasionally if I'm short on time, I'll draw the sketch in one session and do the color version another time. Or sometimes I think that I'm in the mood for drawing and I get half an hour in and just kind of totally lose motivation and so I just come back to it later. If I'm working on a bigger project like a children's picture book then it definitely takes me more than one sitting to do a lot of those illustrations. I don't think there should be any expectation that you finish an illustration in one sitting just because you started it. Just do whatever you have time for and then come back to it later. Plus, when you come back with fresh eyes, you sometimes see improvements that you could make that are easy to miss when you draw all in one sitting, so it might even be beneficial to come back later. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to learn more from me while also supporting my channel, then consider trying out my Patreon for a month to get instant access to lots of my tutorials and drawing guides, which are perfect if you're a beginner artist. The third question is, do you listen to any background noise or calming music when you're working? I do usually listen to something when I draw, but not always when I'm doing other work tasks like writing. When I'm drawing, I like to listen to podcasts or sometimes I watch simple TV shows in the background that I'm mostly just listening to. If I listen to music, it's often lo-fi playlists or video game music, which for some reason helps me work. Maybe it's because it makes me feel like I'm in a fantasy world. Listening to something while I draw usually helps me stay focused on the task because it keeps my brain occupied. Otherwise, I can get distracted and start thinking of other things that I need to do. So if that sounds like you as well, then try listening to something and see if that helps keep you focused. Question number four is how many hours do you work a day on average? I posted a video last week that shows you behind the scenes of how much I work over a month. And at the moment, it's about 35 hours per week. Some weeks I might work seven days straight, but then I might take four days off in a row. It really just depends on what we're up to. The previous two years before this one, I definitely worked more when I was getting the business up and running, but this year I've been trying not to work more than a regular 40 hour week on average. Generally though, it does fluctuate a little bit anyway, because I tend to work more in the winter when it's colder and darker outside and I stay indoors more often. And then I work a bit less in the summer when there's lots to see and do outside. I did try being a bit more structured about my hours, but after a while, I realized that I should just work a bit more when I'm motivated and less when I'm not. Because I fill my business with things that I'm excited about, I enjoy working, so the time off naturally balances out with the time that I spend working. 
The next question is how do you go about goal setting? Do you have a specific time of year to revisit your goals or are they quarterly? These days I find it most useful to look at goals in quarters, so three months at a time, but I do also set smaller goals for the month or bigger general goals for the year. A month is not that long in the context of growing a small business or a new art skill, so I find quarters more reasonable. I'm not very good at revisiting my goals, but if there's something that I wanted to do but didn't get around to last quarter, then it usually gets pushed back and added to the goals for the next quarter. It helps a lot to set goals that I can control and anything else I think of as an outcome or milestone. That way I know that I can achieve my goals through my own actions without relying on anyone else or on algorithms. For example, drawing every weekday was a goal that I had because it's something that I can action, but an outcome or milestone of that goal was reaching 10,000 Instagram followers. I'm aiming for the outcome, but I can't control exactly when that will happen because it partly depends on me and partly depends on some external factors like whatever Instagram's algorithm is doing. So I focus on actionable goals instead that take me in the direction of that outcome. Question six is how do you find clients to illustrate for? Do you reach out to them? The first paid illustrations that I made were portrait commissions and I found all of my customers through Instagram by sharing my art there. The first couple of customers reached out to me directly, but then when I realized that people wanted commissions, I announced it on Instagram and started telling more people about it. Then I was really fortunate and had a publisher reach out to me who had seen my art on Instagram and asked me to illustrate a book for them. And that's how I got my first picture book job. If I were to go looking for new illustration clients, I'd probably put together a digital portfolio of my artwork and email places that were accepting submissions, depending on what kind of illustration work I was looking for. I would do mock versions of the illustrations that I was hoping to get paid for. So if I wanted to illustrate for product packaging, I would make some mock product packaging for my portfolio. Or if I wanted to do editorial illustrations for magazines, I would make a mock magazine article and create illustrations for it. That way the person who's reviewing lots of portfolios can see your skills and style in the appropriate context and it also shows that you have the initiative and passion to do these projects on your own. Question 7 says, Hi Mimi, thank you for the opportunity. What are the skills that you think were essential for your YouTube and social media career to get started and to get to the point where you are currently? Also, how does one know if their art is good enough to post it online and make a career out of it? The good thing about social media is that you can learn the skills that you need as you go. So the main thing for getting started is taking the leap of posting something with whatever skills you currently have. From a technical point of view, if you're making videos, it can help to know how to set up a camera or microphone, film a few different shots, edit them together with some music, design a thumbnail and post what you've made, but start with where you are now and you'll soon find any knowledge gaps that you have and then you can learn them as you need to. Nobody is expecting your first posts and videos to be masterpieces and waiting until you already have everything perfected will only hold you back. Social media is about sharing, so the skills that are important depend on what it is that you want to share. So for me, it's being able to teach what I know by writing scripts for these videos. It's being able to put together small tutorials for my Patreon and being able to illustrate simple things to post on Instagram. As for knowing whether your art is good enough to post, being good is subjective. So if you waited for your art to be good enough for everyone, then none of us would ever post our art anywhere because that doesn't exist. But if you just want your art to be good enough for someone, then post it right now because there are always people out there who will enjoy your art. It isn't about technical skill, art is about expression and storytelling, so it doesn't matter if today is the first day you've ever picked up a pencil, if you can express something with what you create, then it'll resonate with someone else. Question 8 is how much time do you spend per week on creating for YouTube? Do you think the effort you spend on YouTube is worth it compared to other creative efforts? 
YouTube at the moment takes about one to two days a week of my time and probably two days a week of Dan's time to edit. If we want to do lots of new filming, it can take an extra day for the both of us, or if we want to make something simple, it can take a lot less than that. It's a really worthwhile platform for me though, because it's where I can provide the most in-depth value publicly, because I can say and show so much more in long form video than I can on Instagram. I made a simple map a couple of months ago of my business and platforms, and although they all interconnect, it's YouTube that feeds into the most income streams. So financially, YouTube is a really good platform for me. I get paid AdSense and sponsorships for the videos themselves. It feeds people into my Instagram and website so that they can see what else I offer. It drives a lot of traffic to my Patreon and Etsy shop. And like I mentioned, it's where I can provide value and connect with my community. So yes, I definitely think that YouTube is worth the effort it takes once everything gets going. But for a long time, I was making videos without a lot of those benefits. So it's a long term game for sure. Question nine is how did you find sponsorships? Did they come to you or did you reach out to them? And do you have someone who manages sponsorships for you, especially in regards to the financial side? So once my channel started to grow, I started receiving email offers of sponsorship for my videos. But in the beginning, most of the offers were total nonsense and not related to my content at all. And then over time, the offers got better. At the moment, I'm represented by Makerwatch, who negotiate most of my sponsorships for me, which is really helpful because I can let them do all of the emailing and they can get me a better deal than I probably would because they know the industry. They just take a small cut of the deal for the work that they do and I get the rest, so it's really been worthwhile. And the last question that I'm going to answer today is when did you have a full-time job? When did you know it was the perfect time that made you feel comfortable being a full-time artist? I last had a regular full-time job in 2019, which feels like a really long time ago now. I was working as a freelance graphic designer, mostly in film and TV, and would sometimes do full-time contracts for several months at a time. I was looking to transition into something else and wanted to pursue illustration, but was a bit stuck with what to do for quite a while, and then when the pandemic started in early 2020, I took lockdown as my opportunity to pursue illustration as much as I could while I had the extra time up my sleeves. So for me, I didn't know necessarily that it was the perfect time. The opportunity presented itself within the circumstances of 2020 and I just took it and ran with it. I don't have a mortgage or any dependents, so it was also really easy for me to take on the risk of working less to pursue illustration and content creation, which is a situation that I know not everybody has the luxury of being in. I don't think there is ever a perfect time though, you can always come up with a reason not to do something. You don't have to jump completely from a full-time job to being a full-time artist though. Instead, you could try focusing on what makes now a really good time to start taking steps towards being a full-time artist, even if you're not going to be fully there for a couple of years yet. Thanks so much to everyone who submitted their questions. If you'd like some additional help on your creative journey, then consider joining my community over on Patreon. You can cancel anytime and you get instant access to my drawing tutorials, monthly illustration club and digital art videos that I share each and every month. Plus, I'll be getting ready to host my advent calendar there in December with a brand new set of festive goodies, which I'm really excited about and I can't wait to see you there. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then I'd love it if you could give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more art videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.